In this video, we're going to focus on this spinner represented by this 2x1 matrix, and we're going to look for all these expected values expressed in terms of a and b. So let's start off with sx, and the formula for calculating this expected value is the Hermitian conjugate of the spinner multiplied by sx applied to the spinner itself. And in case you're wondering where this formula comes from, you can always understand the spinner as a linear combination of spin up and spin down. So this is the spin up eigenvector, this is the spin down eigenvector. And if I apply sx to the spinner, I will get something like this. So I have sx applied to the spin up eigenvector, and sx applied to the spin down eigenvector. And then this will give me the corresponding eigenvalue multiplied by the eigenvector. And the same for here, we have another eigenvalue multiplied by its associated uh, eigenvector. And so if we consider the Hermitian conjugate of the spinner multiplied by sx applied to uh, the spinner, then what we're going to get is c1, the spin up eigenvector, c2, spin down eigenvector, and the Hermitian conjugate multiplied by this expression. So we have lambda 1, c1, spin up, and then lambda 2, c2, spin down. And if you multiply these two terms together, these cross terms, so the spin down term will be multiplied to the spin up term, and then they are orthogonal, so you get zero. And then since we're, we're assuming that all these eigenvectors, they're all normalized, when this term multiplies with this term, you're just going to get one. So in the end, if you multiply everything, what you're going to get is c1 squared multiplied by lambda 1 plus c2 squared multiplied by lambda 2, which is just the formula for the expected value. And so this is why we can use this formula to calculate the expected value. And so now that we've gotten this out of the way, I'm just going to apply this formula directly. So now let's go back to calculating the expected value of Sx, which is just the emission conjugate of the spinner multiplied by Sx applied to the spinner. And then the emission conjugate of the spinner, this is just the conjugate of A and the conjugate of B. And now the two by one matrix becomes a one by two matrix. And then in case you don't remember, uh, if x uh, if a is represented by x plus i y, then the conjugate, then the conjugate is just x minus i y. So these are the this is the conjugate of a, this is the conjugate of b, and then here we have s x, and that's just this matrix over here. And then this matrix will be applied to the spinner, which is just a b. And so let's try to multiply these terms together. So I'll pull out the constant h bar over two. And then multiplying this matrix, here you can see we have a times 0 plus b times 1, that's just b. And then we have a times 1 plus b times 0, so we just have a. And then we can multiply these two matrices together as well. So we have a conjugate times b plus a times b conjugate. And then a conjugate times b, this is actually just the conjugate of a times b conjugate. So this is just the conjugate of this entire thing. So if a times b conjugate is x plus is x plus i y then the conjugate of a times b conjugate this is just x minus i y and if we add them both together you can see that imaginary terms they cancel out and we just have 2x remaining and so this entire term the only part that remains is the real part times 2 and so you can see that we can express this term over here as 2 times the real part of a times b conjugate and the twos they cancel out so in the end we have h bar times the real part of a times b conjugate and so this is the expected value of sx and now moving on we do the exact same thing for sy we have the same formula except this time the matrix is sy and so we have the same we repeat the same process and then sy that's just equal to h bar over 2 0, negative i, i, 0. And then we have a over b. So we do the same thing again. Let's pull out the constant, and let's multiply the matrices. So here we have a times 0 plus b times a negative i. So that's negative i, b. And then we have i times a plus b times 0. So that's just i, a. And then we have negative i, a conjugate times b, and then plus i, a times b conjugate. 
and then I'm going to pull out the imaginary term. So here we have negative a conjugate times b plus a times b conjugate. And once again, notice that a conjugate times b, a con t this is just the conjugate of a times b conjugate. So this is the conjugate of this entire term. And so here we have minus this term. So if a times b conjugate is x plus iy, this will be minus x minus iy. And if we add these two terms together, you can see the real terms, they cancel out. And all we have left is 2 times iy. So 2i times the imaginary part. So we can express this entire term over here inside the bracket as, as 2i times the imaginary component of a times b conjugate. And so I'm running out of space. So let's move everything up here. So here you see the 2s, they cancel out. You have two i's, so we have i squared, which is just negative 1. So we have negative h bar multiplied by the imaginary term of a times b conjugate. And this is the expected value of sy. And now moving on to sz. So once again, this is, we just follow through the same process. So the Hermitian conjugate of the spinner multiplied by sz, which is given by this matrix. And then we have AB. And then we just go through something very similar. So we have, uh, let's pull out the h bar over 2. And we have A times 1, and then B times 0, and A times 0, and then B times negative 1. So that's negative B. And eventually we have A conjugate times A minus B times B conjugate. And a number multiplied by its own conjugate, that's just the absolute value square. So here we just have the absolute value square of a minus the absolute value square of b. And this is s of z. And actually another easy way to obtain this answer is without using this formula, we can just treat a b as, as this expression. And we know that this is the spin up eigenvector for uh, s z. This is the spin down. And so you can see that there is a absolute value of a square probability of getting spin up, and there is a absolute value of b square probability of getting spin down. And so of course the expected value is just this expression. And then you can see if you add them up, if you just group the terms together, you'll get the exact same expression which we have obtained using the matrices. So this is just another way to get the same answer. And you can actually use this method to get the answers for these two expected values as well, but you'll have to find the eigenvectors for sx and sy. And now moving on, let's move on to sx squared. So finding this, the expected value of this, we first of all, let's take a look at what sx is. So sx is the matrix given by this expression. And so if we take sx squared, we're just multiplying this matrix by itself twice. And let's group the h bar square over 4. Let's group these two terms together. So in the end, we have these two matrices multiplied together. So we have 0 times 0 plus 1 times 1, that's 1. And then 0 times 1 plus 0 times 1, that's 0. And then we have 1 times 0 times 1 times 0, that's also 0. We have 1 times 1, which is 1, plus 0 times 0. So that's just also 1. And so you see that sx squared is equal to this term. And you can see that this is the identity matrix. So if you want to find the expected value of sx squared, if you just apply the same formula, you will see that this is just h bar squared over 4. And then we have the Hermitian conjugate of the spinner. And then we just have the identity matrix, which doesn't change the spinner at all. So this is, this. we can just cancel this out because this is the identity matrix. It doesn't change anything. So in the end, we just have h bar squared over 4. And then we have the uh, spinner, uh, the Hermitian conjugate of the spinner multiplied by itself. And that's just equal to 1 because by definition, this spinner is uh, normalized. And so you can see that the expected value of sx squared is just h bar squared over 4. And so this is how you obtain sx squared. And you can see that the same process also applies to sy squared, the expected value of sy squared. So once again, we just write down sy, and then we multiply it with itself.
And so uh, let's group the h bar square over 4, let's group the constants together, and then let's multiply the matrices. 0 times 0 plus negative i square. So i square is a negative 1. So negative i square, that's positive 1. Here we have 0 times i, which is 0. i times 0, also 0. Negative i times 0, 0. So 0 times negative i, also 0. And then we have another negative i square, that's just equal to 1 plus 0 times 0, which is just 0. So we have, once again, h bar, versus h bar square over 4 and the identity matrix. And so uh, I shouldn't equate these matrices to this expected value. This is sy square. And so uh, this is what we get for sy square, and which is exactly the same as what we got for sx square. And as we found previously, the expected value of sx square is h bar square over 4. So the same argument applies to sy square. And so the expected value of sy square is also h bar square over 4. And now you will see that the same argument also applies to sz square. And so let's just verify that. So we have 1, 0, 0, negative 1. And then we have 1, 0, 0, negative 1. And once again, let's group the h bar, square, uh, h bar over 2s together. And then multiplying the matrices, we have 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0. 1 times 0, 0 times negative 1, so that's 0. 0 times 1, and then negative 1 times 0. And then 0 times 0, negative 1 times negative 1, so that's just 1. Once again, you get the exact same matrix. And so the expected value see, the expected value of x, z squared, this is just h bar squared over 4. And so this is how you find all the expected values. So these are the square terms. And we have also found sx, sy, and sz. And now one final check you can do is that we know that s square applied to the spinner, this is equal to h bar square times s, s plus 1, and then multiplied by the spinner. And in our case, we're dealing with spin 1 half. So spin 1 half, you can see that s is just 1 half. So we should get something like this. So this is just 1 over 2, and then 3 over 2. So what we should get is 3 over 4 h bar square uh, multiplied by the spinner. And then you can see that we've just found that the uh, expected value of sx square, sy square, and sz square, they're all h bar square over 4. And here you can verify that this formula is indeed true. So you can see that the expected value of s square, which should be 3 over 4 h bar square, you can see that this is exactly the same as the sum of the squares of sx, sy, and sz. So we found that all three of these, they're all h bar square over 4. So we just have three of these terms, which is just eight, 3 over 4 h bar square, which is exactly what we would expect. These two values are the same.